welcome back everyone to the next and final technical video of our series. In this part, we're gonna be focusing on some code cleanup, some edge case handling that we haven't done yet, et cetera, et cetera. So go ahead and drop a like down below and let's get back to it. So the first thing that we are gonna do as per usual is run our app in the simulator, make sure things are all looking pretty good. And we'll talk about our first edge case. So the first edge case that arises uh, generally speaking, is related to subscriptions, as per as per expected, right? Subscriptions are kind of tricky, and we want to make sure that we're getting paid for all our hard work and dedication to this app. So the issue specifically is, what happens if a user, you know, is subscribed, then they sign out and they sign into another account? So you might want to handle this, you know, differently by design on your app. But in our case, we want to reset the subscription status once a user has signed out. And we only want to, you know, get the updated subscription state once the user signs in. So this user, in my case, has already subscribed or was already subscribed. Let's go ahead and we're going to tap into, you know, the posts and let's see if we get the paywall, which in fact we do. We're going to go ahead and hit subscribe. I'm going to confirm it here and it's going to let me know that we are good to go. Dismiss the paywall and boom, we can read stuff again. All right, so what happens if I sign out and sign into another account? So let's go ahead and actually handle that. Now, signing out is taken care of in the profile view controller. Specifically, we call the uh, auth manager somewhere in here. There it is, sign out. And once we sign out, just how we get rid of, you know, the email and the name of the currently signed in user, we also want to get rid of the uh, premium state. So we're gonna go ahead and say set false for the key premium. And you might be wondering where is this key coming from? Let me double check that I actually called it premium by going into the IAP manager. And you'll see this is the key that we use in here as well. So on the flip side of this, what happens if I sign back into an account after I have signed out? We then want to go ahead and fetch the user's you know, uh, subscription status. And that is going to happen on the sign in view controller. So let's see, sign in view controller. And wherever we call the auth manager function in here, upon successful authentication for an account, we are gonna go ahead and say IAP manager shared. And we're gonna say, go ahead and get the subscription status. And we don't particularly care about the callback. So it'll just update the subscription Boolean internally. So we're gonna pass in nil for the completion handler. So let me just go ahead and add a comment and say, update subscription status for newly signed in user. And that takes care of that. Now, the other thing, which I mentioned a few times, and if we go into our IAP manager, our in-app purchase manager, our date here is held in memory. What that means is every time the user hits the paywall, they can simply close the app and come back to it and it'll reset. Now that's not ideal for us if we wanna monetize this app. So what we're gonna do is we are going to hold the actual date in user defaults. So I'm gonna go ahead and stay uh, user default standard. And if you take a look at this date for key, you'll see that it's gonna return date optional. We're gonna go ahead and uh, use this as a key to get the date. So this is now a computed property. And what we wanna go ahead and do, let's see why this is yelling at me here. Let's see what's going on. Can I convert return expression of data into date? Uh, that's because I did data there. What we actually want is a date for a particular key. And now we can't actually save the date. So how, how do we go about saving the date? So it's fairly straightforward. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is every time we assign to this, we wanna go ahead and we wanna go ahead and save uh, the dates. And every time we call the getter of this, we wanna go ahead and uh, you know return, take the string that we have saved and convert it to a date and return it. So let me go ahead and create a formatter here and it's going to be a ISO uh, 8601 date formatter. This is a standard date formatter style. And we're gonna go ahead and actually create a static instance of this since it's fairly expensive in terms of you know, memory to create this over and over. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is say, give me a string, which is going to be the formatter and the string for a particular date. 
and let's see what I'm looking for, string from a particular date, and it's going to be this guy right here. So we should have something in here called new value, which is going to be the date coming in. And what we are going to do here is we're going to say guard let date is our new value to make sure that it is not in fact nil. We'll go ahead and return otherwise, you know, if it is uh, nil. And here we can say go ahead and give me a string for this particular date. The next thing that we're going to do is actually cache that string into user defaults. So here we're going to say user defaults standard and we want to go ahead and set and what are we going to set we're going to set the string for a key and that is the key we're going to use and let's see if this complains here i believe it is going to complain because this is going to give us a optional string back so let's see what's going on this guy is going to be all right that's not optional looks like that is just string so we're saying go ahead and set a string uh this thing should be a string here for the key just like that and we should hopefully be looking good so that just about does it. Now we need to implement a getter here as well. So let's go ahead and get a string out of this. So we're going to say let string is going to be user default standard. And we want to get a string for the given key. So we want a string, not the string array. And this guy is going to give us a string back. And we're going to try to use this string optional to get a date. And we're going to convert the date with the ISO uh, date formatter. Now this thing is optional, so we do want to go ahead and unwrap it. So I'm going to go ahead and say try to unwrap it, otherwise return nil, that means we don't actually have a date. And once we finally do have a string, we're going to once again say a date is going to be the IAP manager dot formatter, and we're going to create a date or try to create a date from a string, which is going to be this, and notice that this itself returned to optional, so we can just say return this guy. And I believe that's all we need to do because now we are actually saving that value. So when the user actually tries to view a post again after, you know, they've closed the app and reopened it, we're going to be accounting for the saved value. So go ahead and uh, stop running the app. We're going to run it again. Now we're actually subscribed, uh, which, you know, defeats the purpose of testing this. But let's double check just in case, you know, to make sure we didn't introduce any breaking chains by changing all that. So I'm going to tap into it. I believe we're still subscribed, so we should not see that paywall. But subsequently, if you try this with more users, you're going to see that once you close the app and reopen it after you've hit the paywall, your user will still hit the paywall until 24 hours have gone by since that is what we have actually set the criteria to be. So that's looking pretty good. Let's think of what else we need to handle here. All right, so right now we're not caching the images. I'm not gonna go into that, but if you wanna cache images for faster loading, certainly an option that's available to you. The other thing that we are uh, not doing is we don't necessarily have a way here to you know, switch accounts. Now you could add multi-account support as well if you choose to do so, not gonna do that either. But one thing that I would like to do, which is a nice optimization just to make in general, is adding haptics. So haptics are these subtle vibrations as you interact with things across the app. We're gonna go ahead and create a, a new file here. It's going to be called a haptics manager. And the haptics manager essentially is gonna play these haptics, these haptic vibrations, you know, as we do various things across the app. So this is going to be a singleton, just like all of our other managers. It's going to be called IAP manager we're gonna privatize the initializer just like that and there are going to be two functions in here first one is going to be vibrate for selection which is a pretty subtle you know vibration so we're gonna go ahead and say create a generator and there's this concept of a feedback generator and the one that we want is a selection feedback generator we're gonna say generator go ahead and prepare yourself and generator we're gonna go ahead and say selection changed which is going to go ahead and play a subtle you know vibration in the device the other function that we want is going to be vibrate for type so we're gonna say vibrate for type and this is going to be a UI notification feedback generator and there should be a feedback type off of this go ahead and create one of these and this is going to be impact or notification occurred for type. 
And this essentially allows us to play vibrations for, you know, successes and failures and all that good stuff. And it's a good way to notify the user, you know, should anything go wrong. So let's go ahead and uh, call this haptics manager, not IAP manager. It's not what we want since we used IAP manager elsewhere and that also doesn't make any sense. And let's go ahead and start putting these in our sign and view controller. That's the first place we're gonna put this. So we're gonna go ahead and in did tap sign in. I'm gonna go ahead and say shared for the haptics manager. Hopefully that decides to autocomplete. Shared, go ahead and do command B if it's not autocompleting for you and we are going to say vibrate for selection. So let's see why this is yelling at me. All right, it's because we didn't get auto complete. There we are, vibrate for selection. And similarly, we're gonna do the same thing in the sign up view controller. Once the user hits the sign up button, we're gonna say vibrate for selection. We're gonna jump now to the home view controller and we also have a did select in here. So I'm gonna go put the vibration here once the user taps into this guy and we can actually do it above our paywall code. All right, we're gonna do the same thing in the profile view controller and I keep spelling profile incorrectly. All right, let's look for did select row at index path and drop this guy in here as well. And now let's think about where we wanna add the success and failure haptic. So, where we're going to add that is going to be a create post view controller. So let's go ahead and find that. All right. So in here, when we actually tap on the button to post, we want to go ahead and uh, play a vibration, you know, once the post has successfully been created. So that is going to be here. So here we are going to say after we've inserted it uh, on the main thread, pretty important that you do this in the main thread here, we are going to say vibrate for a success. And if we have failed for any reason, that's pretty, pretty bad. So we are going to say again on the main thread, pretty important. We are going to go ahead and say vibrate for a error. Let me get rid of this unnecessary uh, uh, line break. And I'm going to toss this into all the other guard cases as well, since it's pretty helpful to do that. Go ahead and do that there. Now, I'm not going to add a spinner for the sake of just brevity of the video, but the other thing that you probably want to take care of is once the user hits this post button, show a spinner or maybe show some type of UI indicating to the user that the post is in progress. Uh, now, one thing that you could do to optimize the speed of the post is by reducing the image size. Now you can go ahead and create the image size, you know, with some built-in functions, you can reduce the quality. There are some libraries available for that as well, but I digress, you guys can optimize that as you see fit. And let's see, I believe that's all that I wanted to cover. So that is our blogging app in a nutshell. So we can go ahead and create accounts. We can of course sign in to existing accounts and we have covered how to use revenue cats for our in-app purchases, specifically our paywall for our subscription here. Now you can see that we hopefully should still be subscribed since we have, you know, uh, cached and fetched the subscription status, which in this case is looking awesome. And that's it, that's all I've got for this series. Hope you guys enjoyed it, hope everything made sense. The one thing I'm gonna stress again here is when you do implement in-app purchases, ex especially subscriptions, make sure you're testing with your store kit configuration locally in Xcode to start, but don't don't make that you know the entirety of your test. Make sure you run it on a device. Uh, screwing up subscriptions for end users is really not good uh, for obvious reasons that people will be pretty unhappy. But it's you know just not a good look in terms of you know handling you know refunds and you know very unhappy users. And you honestly want to build something that people enjoy using that monetize as well and you can sustain as a growing app business. So thanks again for watching. I'm gonna be doing you know uh, be, be creating a GitHub page for all of this. So that'll be linked down below. You'll have all the code available to you uh, as per usual. And uh, let me know. Feel free to fork the repo and open any PRs if you want to tweak anything. And that's all I've got. Drop a like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video or series.